Welcome to Cameras. My name is Bertrand. Today we're talking about digital marketing strategy for photographers. I've been invited to this beautiful exhibition and workshop space to do a multi-part series um, really geared towards helping photographers with their digital marketing specifically. Okay, with this um, workshop video being a pretty long one and covering a lot of different topics, um, the guys at Cameras will be putting in a couple of timestamps for you with headings so you can go straight to the content that you're interested in. Also, uh, if you've watched this vi video um, start to finish and you want to go back to a section that was of interest and you want to just recap, um, use these timestamps in the description. First off, what I want to do is just give you a quick overview about me and my history because um, that might be relevant to what we're talking about today, um, might be relevant to where my information comes from, where my experience comes from. So quickly, as I said, my name is Bertrand. I've been working in digital sales and marketing for over 15 years, uh, both internationally, mostly in Europe and in South Africa, for um, first off for large corporates and then also running my own marketing agency. I'm also a photographer. Started off with a little Olympus Strip 35 many, many, many moons ago, uh, shooting film. Used to be my mother's camera and I still have it, still works, still enjoy that camera. So photography has always been a passion. I've always done photography as part of the marketing packages that I do for customers. When we're building websites, when we're doing um, social media marketing, photography has always been an integral part. Um, I've got a, a background in mechanical engineering. That's what I study. So that makes me pretty analytical about looking at all the stats and the data. And over the years, that's definitely been a drive in improving customers' digital marketing. It's looking at all the data, gathering all the data, and making sure that we're doing things that actually work and not just doing things that everybody says we need to be doing. You can also find me online at uh, bertrand1.com. If you want more info about the uh, following workshops that we'll be doing at Cameras, you could follow Cameras on social media, also go to their website, subscribe to their newsletter, same with mine, Bertrand underscore one is my Instagram. And then the second one is Bertrand underscore one photo. Okay, let's start off with talking about strategy versus tactics. In this um, workshop, we're basically going to be covering marketing strategy. The main difference between strategy and tactics is uh, a lot of the things that people tell you to do and how to do them and how to get followers on Instagram and um, what to do on YouTube and all these little things that people keep on telling you mostly fall under the category of tactics. So these are the little things that you could go and read up on or have a quick look at a video for. But mainly what we've seen over the years with um, the customers that we've been helping with digital marketing strategy is it's mostly not about the tactics, it's about getting the strategy correct first. So starting off with the correct marketing strategy, you know where to go and look and find these little tactics to make you more efficient. Strategy means uh, we're looking at the bigger picture, we're looking at your target audience, we're looking at where you want to be in five years, in ten years, we're looking um, about, um, towards the outcomes of our marketing efforts. Um, and we're focusing less on how we're going to accomplish that because at every step of the way um, we can get these little inputs to help us with the actual tactics on how to do the, the little nuts and bolts things. So strategy is really important because we could be spending, and I see this often with customers, they could be spending hours and hours on what they would think is their digital marketing, but in most cases, uh, when we dig down and look at the analytics, they're actually not making sales from 80, 90% of what they're doing online. Where they're getting their inquiries from is maybe five to 15% of where they're spending their time. So if you focus on your strategy and, and focus your time and attention on these things that are actually getting your inquiries and bookings, um, you could really grow your business fast and also you could free up a lot of your time by not doing the things that aren't actually working for you. Unicorns and magic ones. So I've got a little collection of things that I've picked up over time that customers do and what they think about digital marketing. And um, a lot of the time these perceptions, and they're just perceptions, are built over time. It's what people tell them, it's what um, the media tells them, and a lot of it is not actually correct. So the first thing um, in my little collection of unicorns and magic ones is that people think that digital marketing is magic. Um, a lot of people come to me, they call me, they say, oh, my business is not doing so well, let's do digital marketing, it's going to be uh, the magic bullet. Uh, we're going to grow, everything's going to be fine as soon as I get onto social media or do proper digital marketing. 
and um, digging down into this it's usually not the case so what we want to be doing is making sure that we're focusing on the correct things uh, digital marketing is going to be amplifying what you're doing so if there's a fundamental flaw in your business if your product's got a flaw if there's a quality issue if there's a pricing issue if there's any issues in your business you really have to fix those first before focusing on your digital marketing digital marketing would amplify whatever you're doing so if you're doing a good um, job already if you're providing a good service already we could amplify that get that to more people get more people to know about you um, but it's not a magic fix for a business that's got some other fundamental flaw and that's that's definitely one thing that you need to to keep in mind the next thing um, that I like to ask new new customers when it comes to digital marketing is um, can you make this sale in person so if today I can get you in front of somebody who's in your target audience, it's somebody you want uh, to do work for, if I can get you um, a meeting with them, if I can get you in front of them, can you make the sale? Can you convince that person to use uh, your services or to book you as a photographer in this case? Um, can you do it one-on-one -on -one in his office? If you can do that, then what digital marketing allows you to do is to get that message out to more people and you can get more, more bookings. But the fundamental question is, can you make that, that sale in person? And then um, digital marketing will amplify that message and you can reach more people. Then um, the other misconception is that it's something completely new, that it's something um, radical that's happened now in the last years with social media marketing and digital marketing. And in actual fact, it's not. Things like, uh, for instance, influencers that we um, often get to work with these days. Influencers aren't really as new as people would like it to be. Um, influencers used to be called um, sponsored athletes, for instance, or sponsored celebrities, for instance. And, and we saw that for many, many years, even before digital marketing. And it was a way of um, getting your brand message out, of marketing, um, even before digital marketing. So. These things have changed. The way we leverage all these social media platforms and digital marketing has changed. Uh, but the fundamentals of marketing is still valid. It's about getting your message out. It's about getting to your target audience. And it doesn't really matter which channels you are using. Uh, the fundamentals are still true. So we need to make sure that our strategy is correct first and then that we pick the correct channels to get to those people you need to get to. The thing that I often see with customers is a misperception that if they spend a lot of time on social media they're going to get more bookings or more customers and that's definitely something that that comes up often. I see people wasting hours and hours every day on places like Facebook and they think if they just continue doing that they're going to get a lot more bookings um, and that's not true. When we look at especially larger companies where they've got really big marketing budgets, um, they actually spend a lot less time just being on social media, but they spend a lot of time creating content, they spend a lot of time making sure that they're targeting the right people and publishing and interacting with the right people. They, just, um, they haven't got people just mindlessly scrolling through Instagram feeds or Facebook feeds. Uh, when they open up these platforms or these apps, they make sure that they're focused, that they've got a target for that um, half an hour or an hour they're spending. Um, they make sure that whatever they're doing is going to be growing their business or um, they want to be interacting with the correct people, with their target audience. It's not just about being on social media, it's about really making sure that you're focused when you open up those apps. Then the last one that um, I often see is people are looking at vanity metrics. So. Vanity metrics are things that look nice. So for instance, follower accounts on some of these social media networks. When somebody opens up your profile, it looks nice if you've got a lot of followers, but that does not necessarily translate in more bookings as a photographer, does not necessarily translate in more sales of whatever um, your service or product is. So what we'd rather be tracking when we're looking at um, digital marketing is the actual sales, the actual inquiries that you're getting. And yes, followers could translate eventually into sales or bookings, but what it can also easily become is just a, uh, a race towards followers and uh, marketing that's focused on getting followers instead of um, inquiries or bookings, for instance. So um, I could have a very large photography account, for instance, and all my followers are fellow photographers. In that case, I might not be getting portrait bookings, for instance, because my 10 or 20,000 followers are all photographers and they, um, they like my um, photography and we can talk about the photography, but they're still not my target market and I'm not getting bookings. So I often see that people um, do exactly that and they're not really talking to their potential customers. 
they're talking to their peers in this case. Um, and that's not really um, time well spent on social media if your focus is on growing your business and getting more bookings. The next section I want to cover in this workshop is where do you want to go? So that's a very important question. Where do you want to go with your business? Uh, where do you want to be in five or ten years? So before you're looking at your strategy and social media networks you want to be on and your website, you really need to get a clear picture of what you want to do with your business. And with photography, it's valid to say um, it's a hobby. I want to enjoy it. And then your social media profiles might look different uh, where you're targeting these posts that you're doing, the frequency of your posts, all these things will look very different to somebody who says, I want photography to be my full-time income, I want to grow this business, I want to be, um, maybe get an image in a certain magazine, all these targets would look completely different when you approach your social media. So be clear about what you want. Do you want your photography to just um, maybe cover the costs of your equipment? Do you really want to be successful and um, make it your full-time full income? and um, get a lot of bookings and customers. So focusing on these different things and also then being clear about who your target audience is. So make, making sure that you know uh, what type of photography that you like, for instance. Uh, do you want to be doing portraits, headshots, uh, fashion, uh, street photography? All these different things will make a big difference in for instance, which social media platforms you select, um, how do you structure your website, all these different little pieces of the puzzle to get where you want to be in five or ten years. Take some time, uh, sit down, write some notes down, uh, what do you enjoy in your photography, where do you want to be, do you want to do it as a hobby, do you want to do it semi-professionally, do you really want to go all in and do it professionally? These are questions that you need to answer before getting stuck in and just getting into posting on social and, and interacting with people. Well, the next key thing that you need to consider is knowing your audience. So we've talking about, uh, talked about it a little bit before. Uh, you really need to know your audience. You really need to know where they hang out. Um, where do they hang out physically? Where do they hang out digitally? Um, when your target audience uh, opens up their phone, which app do they open up? Um, and this differs to, from um, different Audiences, whether they are um, younger, older, the demograph demographics are completely different. Um, are you targeting businesses? Are you targeting consumers? Um, so just as an example, are you, are you doing family portraits? So you might uh, look at different social media networks for that versus targeting businesses for headshots maybe or product photography. Um, there might be different applicable social networks, different ways of getting to these people. And um, for instance, somebody who books a photographer professionally might not want to see an ad on their personal Instagram on a weekend when they're relaxing. Uh, maybe you want to be on a social network that they are using for work during work hours, as an example. Somebody who's booking a photographer for a family shoot might be the opposite. So just make sure that you know your audience and figure out where they're spending their time online um, and even where they're spending their time offline. Uh, what hobbies do they have? What things do they do? All these things will help you to make sure that you're targeting the right people with your marketing. Um, one clear difference is the way you market to businesses versus the way you market to individuals. Very different. Uh, and that's the first thing that you need to figure out with your photography. Are you marketing and are you gearing all your marketing efforts for a business? or towards an individual in their private capacity. Then the last thing is just a little example. You wouldn't be going and setting up a nice shop uh, where you're expecting a lot of customers out in the middle of nowhere, maybe on a farm. And it's the same with your social media, it's the same with your digital marketing. Um, you have to go where your customers are. You, you really want your shop to be in a nice busy main street or shopping mall or somewhere where you know your customers will be walking past your shop where they'll be seeing your product, where they'll be seeing your branding. Um, and it's the same with your digital marketing efforts. You want to be in places where you know your audience is hanging out so that you can get your branding and your product in front of them. Now a key issue for photographers always is their portfolio. Where do you put it? Um, it might be valid for an amateur photographer to just focus on something like a social media network like Instagram, post their photos there, get some feedback on what they're doing with their photography and that's all good and well. But as a professional photographer, if you really want to grow your business, there's really only one place to put your portfolio. 
we've tried um, many different ways of approaching this. We've tried different social media networks and the best results time and again by far is for photographers to put their portfolios on their own website. The reason for this is on your own website you can control the whole experience. Nobody else can buy ads on your website if you don't allow it. You can't have your competition buying ads uh, in the sidebar on your website. For instance, on all these social media networks, you will see related posts, you will see ads, and it's all on the same um, screen where your branding and your business is. So it's very hard to keep people focused when you're trying to sell something on social media. On your own website, you control the whole experience, you control the branding, there's no ads, there's no distracting competitors, and you can really, really um, have full attention on your work and showcase it in the way that works for you. Now, having said that, um, you need to make sure with this portfolio that you're not showcasing everything that you do. Um, be focused, think about your audience. Um, have a, in every, if you're doing two or three categories, that's fine, but to have a real focus with, with where you want to get your growth from. So in any period for a couple of years maybe, focus on one type of photography, really grow that, really share that. Um, it's fine for photographers, especially in smaller markets, maybe like South Africa, to have more than one focus. But in marketing, you'll get really good results if you focus on one thing at a time. And over time, you can build uh, towards different markets. So, um, with your portfolio on your own website, make sure that it reflects this focus. Don't just put 50 or 100 random photos of different things. Showcase the sort of work where you want to get more bookings from, uh, for showcase the, the, the type of photography that you want to focus on for the next foreseeable future and also don't have too many um, images on your portfolio on your website. It does things technically like uh, increase loading times which is really bad for websites but it will also do things um, like distract people. If you've got 20 images they'll start with the first one they'll go maybe quarter of the way in and they'll stop and maybe your best image is number 20 or number 30 uh, in your photo gallery. So you don't want people to be missing your best images. Only have maybe a handful of images in every category of your portfolio on your website. Make sure that it's easy to get to. Make sure that it loads fast and um, only have your best images. Then the other thing for your portfolio is always update. As you shoot, you'll get more images, you'll do more customer work. And every time after a shoot, what I do is I go through and say, is there anything in this shoot that could make it to my portfolio, even if there's one image? Then I go back to my portfolio and say, what's my weakest image right now in this category on my port portfolio? And I drop that image and put the new one in. Um, often it happens that I do a shoot and there's no portfolio image in there. Um, as your portfolio gets stronger, you'll go longer times in between without adding to it, but at least ask that question after every shoot. At least look at your images and say, should this be in my portfolio? And then drop something else as you put the new image in. So over time, your 10 images in your, let's say there's a headshot portfolio on your website. If you've got 10 images in there, over time, those images will get better. The average image in that um, group of 10 will be a better image over time. So keep shooting, keep picking new ones and make sure that you don't have too many images in there. That's a, probably the mistake I see most often on websites. People say, but how about this one and maybe somebody wants that and maybe we should include this image because this looks different and there's just too many images in there um, and you're basically diluting the quality of your work by having too many images in a portfolio. And then the other thing for photographers is just go and shoot more. So. Um, Previously, I did a comrades marathon and the amount of training the athletes do for something like running a comrades, the amount of hours you, you put in per week just to be prepared for that day is um, extraordinary. And one thing that I realized they preparing for doing something like running a comrades marathon is if you put in the work, you'll get the results. Uh, it's the same thing with photography. I speak to photographers saying, I want to grow my business. Uh, I want to go professional with this. I want to quit my day job. Um, and they shoot maybe one photo shoot in two months. Um, they pick up their camera maybe once in two weeks. Uh, when you're training for something like a comrade, you're spending an hour to two hours every day doing that. Um, so even if you, um, 
if you're an amateur but you want to take it to the next level, if you really want to build your portfolio, um, go out, take your camera with you, walk around in your lunchtime, um, ask family members to sit for portraits, do whatever you need to do to be using your camera and building this portfolio. The more you do it, the better you'll get. Um, even if you spend a day walking around taking um, street photos, you're getting to learn your camera. Even if there's nothing that makes it into your portfolio for that day, that's been your training. It's, it's a day's worth of training and practice um, and skills that you've got now that you didn't have the previous day. So keep on shooting, keep on spending the time and your portfolio will really see the benefits of this. The, the more photos you shoot in a week, the better the chances of you getting that portfolio shot in there. So that's really something to make sure of. You can't be saying, I want to be going or getting my portfolio out and it needs to be better if you're not really putting in the work and um, shooting more. We've covered your portfolio, where to put your portfolio. Now the big question is, um, you've got a nice portfolio, you've put in the work, uh, you've trimmed it down to only your best images, you've built the website, it's beautiful, and it's switched on and you're looking at your analytics and nobody's seeing it. Nobody's coming to it, um, nobody's looking at your website. So the next phase is getting people onto your portfolio website. Um, so how do we do that? There's a couple of different options. Uh, today we're just looking at the strategy and your options so that you can, can go and think about all of these. In future workshops we will cover the actual tactics and how to really execute and, and the little fine nuts and bolts to get people onto your website. But uh, covering the different options. First one in South Africa that you can't ignore is Google search. Um, in a lot of cases for my customers, upwards of 80% of all the traffic on their websites originate on Google search. So it's a, it's a big driver of traffic. It's a big place where you can get new customers or you can get potential customers or inquiries from. And it's a really good place to get people onto your website. Most people, when they've got something that they, they know they want, for instance, somebody needs a family photo shoot, they will go to Google to find a supplier. Um, that's the first place. When people are looking to find how to do something, there's different places they would go, for instance, YouTube. But if they know what they want and it's a service or a product, in most cases they'll start in Google. Next place um, that people might find you and where they could click on something and get over to your website is on social media. So if you just showcase your work on social media, you could have links there and you could get people off social media where all your competitors are and where even other people buying ads might be competing for attention. But it's a good place to source the traffic from and then as fast as possible uh, move them over to your website. So that's what social media does very well. Another place to get people onto your website is if you've got a newsletter, that helps. Um, a lot of people are thinking that email marketing is outdated and that they're getting a lot of spam. But companies that do newsletters are still getting um, amazing conversion rates with newsletters. Uh, people still think when they open up their email that it's important. If they get a good email with good quality information in, they value that. Um, and it's a time in a lot of people, especially um, in businesses, a lot of people first thing in the morning would open up their email when they get to the office, they would work through their email inbox and you've got their full attention. Whereas on places like social media, um, there's always other things competing for their attention. So don't forget newsletters, it's definitely a, a good way of marketing if you're doing it correctly. Um, there's ways of doing it badly, there's ways of spamming people, there's ways of uh, getting blocked but uh, or blacklisted in this case but if you do it well really good marketing tool then also speaking about email things like your email signature is a good place to um, put your website uh, link as well we do see when we're looking at analytics that in a lot of cases people are clicking through from email signatures to websites um, and it gives you a bit of credibility having your website in your email signature when you're talking to people. Uh, when you're sending out quotes, these sorts of things, uh, people can click there and look at your portfolio. So it, it's part of building your credibility and your brand, um, having that link there. And people do click on them. Then another way to get people to your website is using other websites. So um, if you've got related websites where you could maybe post an article, or um, if you've got friends in related industries with websites or blogs, um, even directory websites might help sometimes they could some directory websites are better than others um, but especially if it's 
dedicated websites, maybe like a wedding directory website, would do better for a photographer that has weddings than just a general website like maybe a yellow pages type one. Um, but these links from related and other websites would get traffic to your website and it's definitely an advantage to have these links back to your site. Um, another place where we see traffic coming in is what we call direct. So that's a category of traffic coming to your website where um, people are typing in your website address into the little bar at the top of the um, whatever they're using, Chrome or Safari or Internet Explorer or whatever browser they're using. So they've seen your website address somewhere. A lot of the, in a lot of the cases it might be something like a business card or a, a flyer or something that's got your website address on or somebody told them about your business and gave them uh, your website address. So for instance, uh, in a, a business where you need to build credibility, if you've got a meeting with somebody face to face, you've got it in there, you add the meeting and you leave your business card. In a lot of cases, what we see is right after that meeting, they would go onto your website to look at your portfolio, uh, look at your about page, for instance, read up about you before they actually give you the go ahead on a project. So that's a really important way of um, showcasing what you can do and also telling people a little bit more about yourself. Um, is by using your website on your business cards. So it's definitely another way of getting people onto your website. And then other offline forms of getting people in, so that might be print marketing, um, as we mentioned, flyers, leave behinds, um, anything that's got your website address on that's actually printed or a physical thing, maybe handouts at shows, anything like that. All right, now having thought about your marketing strategy, you know where to put your portfolio, you know which audiences you want to focus on, you've got an idea of where they hang out online, um, so you've narrowed down your social media ne networks where you want to focus, you know um, your portfolio is up to date and it's of good quality. Now basically um, you need to know how to execute on all these strategies that you've come up with. So how do you grow your social media following if, if that's the way you want to go on specific networks? Um, what are the little tweaks you can do to your website for that to perform better? How do you get people that come to your website to actually fill in the little form or pick up the phone and call you um, and to get that inquiry? How do you convert visitors into leads basically? So all these little things we will cover in future web, uh, workshops. I'm also happy if you contact me directly through my website or through social media, I'm happy to answer any questions. But um, Another thing that you have to do for me is subscribe to the camera's newsletter, also to mine. We'll both be um, putting out newsletters um, telling you about future workshops where we'll be tackling exactly all these little um, small details and how to actually do things like set up your website, make sure that it's performing well, how to track visitors on your website. Um, so these will all be covered in future workshops. So uh, keep an eye out for those. Make sure you subscribe to the newsletters. And uh, any questions, just contact me on social or comment on the video on the um, YouTube channel or social media where you're looking at this.